Okay guys, this is my 2006 Honda Odyssey and today I'm gonna try to explain how I solve a problem that I had with Eileen and some misfire um, codes. I was driving this car normal, um, it had no lights on the dashboard or anything like that and when I got home, when I got to town, uh, the engine light came on and the car was idling really bad. I hooked up a code reader to the car and I found out that it had a total of six codes stored. Um, P0420, uh, which is catalytic converter, and it had uh, P0302, P0301, P0305, and P0300. The P0300 is the random cylinder misfire, which means there's a misfire going from cylinder to cylinder. The P0302, P0301, and P0305 uh, indicate that uh, cylinder 2, 1, and 5 were misfiring. So for a car that was running well, uh, and then all of a sudden these lights uh, these codes pop up and the engine light comes on. Um, I didn't think that it could be a spark plug issue or a coil, uh, ignition coil issue, uh, just because uh, there's too many cylinders misfiring at a time. And I thought it was too big of a coincidence that uh, three spark plugs and or three ignition coils will go bad at the same time. Uh, there are multiple reasons why a car can misfire, um, but uh, it just happened that it, it, if you can identify the problem, uh, or at least think critically about the problem, uh, you will likely uh, be pointed to the right uh, to the right cause. In my case, I just thought that it was too odd that three cylinders uh, would be misfiring at a time, plus the P0300, which is a random misfire code. So I just look for some component um, that would be upstream, right? Something that affects all cylinders. Uh, after doing some search in, in uh, definitely the, my web browser, and after going to YouTube for a few videos, um, I found that the possible cause could be like a vacuum leak or something related to fuel injection, like fuel pump and why not. So I thought the easiest thing to do and the one that would cost me nothing would be to check the EGR valve first. There's information out there that tell you what an EGR does, what it, what it is and what it does. Uh, so I recommend that you guys go and check that. Uh, check any information that's available to you before you decide to go into your car. Uh, and start taking parts out and definitely before you buy any parts. For my situation, like I said, uh, I decided to go and check the EGR valve and um, this part of the video was when I was actually doing the job. Um, here you can see I'm taking the connector off. Uh, the two nuts that hold the EGR valve has already been taken off. I'm showing these parts just to illustrate how the valve looks when they come out and here you will see what was causing my problem. I know it's a little difficult to see but if you look closely uh, over here there are two big pieces of uh, carbon buildup that were holding this the valve open. Uh, this little cylinder over here at island speed was supposed to retract and close this gap over here uh, which is part of the normal function of the valve but because of these two little pieces over here the valve was took open so all I had to do to solve my problem was remove the two pieces of buildup and uh, take advantage that the valve was out and clean the overall area and reinstall the valve back what it was Again, really easy to do. Uh, two nuts to hold it in, uh, take them off, uh, pull the valve out and clean it. 
put it back in place, put the nuts together and hook up the connector again. Like nothing really difficult. It took me probably 10 to 15 minutes. I mean, it, here are the tools that I use to do that. Uh, first and foremost, a cup of coffee. It got to be hot because it was a cold morning. This is my personal code reader, which I got a few weeks ago from Amazon. Uh, it was very inexpensive. I paid, I believe, $35 for it, and I've used it a couple times, and it, I believe it has saved me uh, a few bucks. Uh, here's a set of ratchet and socket. The socket is a 12 millimeter. Uh, there are two knots that hold together the EGR valve, and um, that's the only socket that you need to take it out. You will also need some extensions, which I'm showing here. The flathead helped me take the engine cover off, which is uh, very easy to do. Uh, it's just a quarter of a turn into a flathead plastic screws. Uh, the adjustable wrench I use to loosen up the battery cable. Uh, I decided to unplug one of the battery cables out before I uh, did the job. And the plastic brush I used to clean out the EGR valve uh, when I took it out. I also used a little bit of this Autosun uh, degreaser when I took my EGR valve out. It just happened to have some uh, carbon buildup over there. So I sprayed a little bit of this degreaser and brush it off with the, the plastic brush and it just helped clear it out. This is the this is the, the plastic bolt that I was talking about, just a quarter of a turn to take it out and there are two of them. Once you take the cover out, here you can see this is one of the nuts that hold. This is the EGR valve, by the way. Uh, it's right here in the front of the engine, right on the top. Uh, there are two nuts over there that hold the valve together. One of them is in the back. You can see this is the one that I'm pointing it to. Uh, the other one is on this side. It's difficult to see because of lighting, but it's right there and you'll, you'll be able to see it and access it with no problem. This connector that I'm showing here now is the connector that goes to the EGR valve. Uh, before you actually loosen the nuts to hold the EGR valve in place, you will want to disconnect this connector. Uh, it is very easy to do. Uh, you press on the top and pull uh, back. Uh, it'll come right off. Uh, make sure you hold the connector by the head and not by the wires because you might actually uh, damage the harness if you do that. So again, in my situation, I got a lot of scary codes and Sometimes it's not only about saving money uh, by avoiding to visit a mechanic. Uh, sometimes visiting, visiting a mechanic uh, can take time that you, you don't have. This, for example, happened to me on Christmas Eve, and I knew my mechanic would probably not be able to take the car in until two or three days later, uh, and I needed the car. So with a little bit of research and, and uh, thinking critically about the problem, I was able to save myself and my family some time uh, and some dollars over there. Okay, uh, thanks for watching and if you like the video please uh, give us a thumbs up. Thank you very much.